Out of the civil war in the United States, numerous misconceptions have been spread widely by people, politicians and, well, the media. One prevalent issue is that of the Confederate flag, and which is the issue I'm going to be covering today, and I'm going to try and, well, inform you about. And with that, let us get into it. First of all, this is not the Confederate flag and it never will be. This is the battle flag of the Army of the Tennessee and this is the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia. Both are employed regularly to be the state flag though neither were approved or ever used as the state flag. The Stars and Bars served as the Confederacy's first recognised flag from March 4th 1861 until May 1st 1863. It is claimed to resemble the flag of Austria which Marshall would have been familiar with. Marshall was the artist who created this, he was a Prussian American and it included exactly seven stars representing the seceded states of South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana and Texas. And, well, the Stars and Bars was approved on, as I said, the 4th of March 1861 at Montgomery, Alabama, which served as the first national capital of the Confederate States of America. As the Confederacy grew, so did the number of stars. Two were added for Virginia and Arkansas in May 1861, followed by two representing Tennessee and North Carolina in July, and finally two more for Missouri and Kentucky, though neither of these two states actually joined the Confederacy, their partisan factional governments declared secession without having full control over their population or territory. When the American Civil War did break out, the Stars and Bars confused battlefield soldiers and commanders because of its similarity to the US flag, and this also brought ideological criticism because it resembled a centralised federal power, which as you know was against the Confederate States government, who had seceded from that exact type of government. By mid-war, there were already calls to replace the flag due to aforementioned reasons that were stated in the previous chapter. It was by this point that many flag proposals began to include the battle flags you saw at the start of the video, and this was because it became a popular symbol in the Confederacy. As hereby stated, the Confederate Congress specified that a new design to be a white field with the Union to be a square two-thirds the width of the flag, having ground red, Thereupon, a broad satire of blue, bordered with white and emblazoned with mullets or five-pointed stars, corresponding with the number of that of the Confederate States. This flag would become the famous stainless banner, though we're unsure who is the exact designer, as many Confederate records were burned when Richmond fell to Grant's army. In explaining the white background, Thompson wrote, as a people, we are fighting to maintain the heaven-ordained supremacy of the white man over the inferior or coloured race. A white flag would thus be emblematical of our cause. The Confederate Congress debated whether the white field should have a blue stripe or whether it should be bordered in red. William Miles delivered a speech supporting the simple white design, but that was eventually approved. He argued that the battle flag must be used, but it wasn't necessary to emblazon it for a national flag but as simply as possible with a plain white field. When Thompson received word that Congress had adopted the design with a blue stripe, he published an editorial on April 28th in opposition, writing that The blue bar running centre of the white field joining in the right lower arm of the blue cross is in bad taste and utterly destructive of the symmetry and harmony of the design. Initial reaction to the flag was favourable, but over time it became criticised for being too white. Imagine that, the Confederates criticising something for being too white. Military officials also complained that it looked like the flag of, well, a truce, and naval ships complained that it was too easily soiled. A man named Rogers petitioned the Confederate States on March the 4th to introduce a redesign of the flag. Rogers defended his redesign by symbolising the primary origins of the people of the Confederacy, with the saltire of Scotland, the red bar from the flag of France and having as little possible of Yankee blue. The Flag Act of 1865, passed by Confederate Congress very near the end of the war, describes the flag in the following language. The Confederate States of America do enact that the flag of the Confederate States shall be as follows. 
the width two thirds of its length, with the union to be in width three fifths of the width of the flag, and so proportioned as to leave the length of the field on the side of the union twice the width of the field below it, to have the ground red and a broad blue saltire thereon, bordered with white and emblazoned with five mullets, or five pointed stars, corresponding in a number of that to the Confederate States, that the field be white except the outer half from the Union to be a red bar extending the width of the flag. But due to timing, very few of these flags were actually produced, and well, very few Confederates actually saw the flag. Ones made by Richmond Clothing Depot at the square canton of the second national flag, rather than actually having the new design that was specified by the law. Please remember to keep the comments polite, as I know people's passions tend to get very, well, again, passionate about this. Um, so if you're going to correct me, if you're going to correct someone else, if you're going to make a point, please keep it civil, because there is room for discussion and there is room for disagreement, but there's not room for hate. So uh, I hope you find today's video interesting as much as I did. I do love doing these videos. Please click the bell symbol, like, subscribe before continuing, leave a comment if you want. Go join my Discord server actually, that's going to be in the link below, it's in the link below in most of my videos. And my American Civil War playlist will also be down below as well, it was also in the start of the video up to about 20 seconds. But anyway, uh, with that I'm going to bid you a good day and I'll see you later guys.